Hey everyone, Techni here with one interesting product today. That is the Zephyr Gaming Mouse. And this mouse has a fan in it. Like seriously, a, a physical fan to keep your hand cool right on the tail end here. But we'll get into that fan later on right there, but I just wanna let you know this company did state this is a review copy and they're still working out a couple kinks and improvements on it before it becomes available on Kickstarter. So again, we're kinda of gonna take this as a review copy, but still we're gonna point out some flaws and hey, hopefully they fix those ones that I've noticed with it. So real quick, before we get into the juicy stuff and everything, let's go ahead and talk about the basics, the shape, the dimensions, and the weight right here. And let me tell you what, it's very comfortable in the hand, incredibly comfortable. As you can see, it's, not really honeycomb, I don't know what you call it right there, like a web. So it's really awesome, first off, to see that design, design like that. But again, what I wanna point out is how the, the solid piece goes all the way back right here. So again, your pinkies don't get into those holes. As you all know, that really annoys me with uh, mice with holes all around it, you know? So it's really nice to have those solid right there. But as far as the shape and dimensions, again, really nice for a claw grip. That's where I really primarily set it, is a claw. Uh, maybe a little bit of palm. It, my hand hangs off it because it's a little bit shorter right here. You can definitely get a fingertip, but again, I, I say primarily as a claw. Now, this is where things start getting a little bit interesting. Um, number one, okay, let's say it's a review copy. Let's just say that first right here. But on the box, on the marketing material and everything, it states this mouse is 68 grams. On multiple of my scale, I get 86 grams, so I think someone read these numbers wrong right here. And again, it does not feel 68 grams. It feels more or less up into that 80s to 90s right there. Is that too heavy? No, not at all. You all know I like my mice around 70 to 90, you know? So I think it feels fantastic, but again, it is not 68 grams. So now as far as the buttons on the mouse right here, really cool. Number one, let's start with these side buttons. Just take a look at them. So number one, they're a little bit different than we usually see in some mice, right? But it's really nice. If you're getting that claw grip, again, it locks your thumb in right there. If you're getting that fingertip, again, it locks your finger right there, prevent it from sliding forward. Really nice, you can really decipher them. And again, they're always right there. Really cool and innovative. At first, weird, but again, they really do work out. One and two, very crispy. You do feel the lip around one and two sometimes when you're pressing, it kind of locks you in right there not annoying or anything but again sometimes you do feel that little lip that raises up right there scroll wheel very nice and tactile but a little bit thin i do feel it being a little bit thin again that could just be me and my chunky fingers and then of course you have your dpi button right here which is pretty much flush with the rest of the mouse Now when we flip the mouse over, we're using a 3389 sensor, absolutely spot on, fantastic sensor. But these feet now, the feet are very nice, very chunky PTFE feet and everything, but there's just not enough. You know what I mean? They're kind of spread out, scattered right there, you know? And you know when we just, a lot of mice do it up front right there and you feel that little bit of friction. I feel like there needs to be a bigger foot somewhere, maybe like in the middle or something to kind of balance it out. Cause again, on a mouse pad with all these gaps in between each foot right here, you feel a little bit of friction and especially on the side right here with no foot being in the middle, you feel a little friction from the side. So I hope that's one thing they fix is again, put some sort of foot right there in the middle. Now let's talk about the cable on this mouse right here. Wow, this cable is fantastic. It is a very nice cable. Maybe one of the best I've used on a uh, stock mouse right there. Really nice, very thin. You don't, you can't really move it around too much in there with that shoelace feeling, you know, but very thin and very, very lightweight. Fantastic stock cable here. And that also goes for the build right here. I mean, this mouse is solid. No creaking, no cranking anywhere. Very thick plastic and very durable and you do feel it in the hand. Again, no flex whatsoever. Now, as you can see, the mouse does also have RGB, but there's no software. So everything that's controlled on it is right on it. Number one, your DPI, you press it and it changes the buttons on the side or the lights on the side of those three lines right there, letting you know which DPI increment you're in. And then of course you can hold one and two and then press your side button and it'll change the effect from a rainbow or a static breathe or a starlight type of thing right there. But the stinker about it is number one, there's no way to dim it. And number two, I can't just set it on a solid color. So that was again, a big stinker for me. Y'all know I love my mice just to be a solid red or something, but I can't, I always got this stinking bright 
rainbow flashing mouse in the background right there. And even besides it being just rainbow, it was just incredibly bright. But again, that's probably just me. I'm not a big, you know, flashy RGB kind of guy. If you are, this has it 100%. Now, as far as adjusting your DPI with that DPI button, it does change those three lights on the side of the mouse, and it goes from 800, 1600, 3200, 6400, and 16,000. And that is one thing I actually already talked to them about with that DPI. I use 400 DPI, and with there not being any software on this mouse, you have to have that lower option, because for me, 800 is a little bit spicy, you know what I mean? I gotta get in my game and lower it down a little bit. So I did talk to them about that, and they said they are going to implement that 400 DPI. So good fix right there. All right, so let's go on and get into what you all have been waiting for, and that is the fan on this mouse. That's that little tiny button you saw on the back feet right there. You can press it three times. Once is off, then you got high, and then you have low right there. And let me tell you what, the first button is high since it just kicked up. Yes, you do clearly feel it, you know what I mean? Are you getting sweaty palms in your game? I don't know, that's per person, you know what I mean? But as far as the fan, you do hear it. And a lot of us are probably thinking just like what I thought. What a stinking gimmick, you know what I mean? But heck, we can say that about RGB all day long, right? Who needs lights on a mouse? Who needs lights on a PC fan? It's gimmicky, you know what I mean? But this fan right here, it's really cool innovation, you know what I mean? And think about a lot of tech like that, like electric cars or whatever, maybe. You think they're goofy at first, then you kind of see it's like, that's a cool idea, you know? And that's exactly where this fits. Is it perfect? No. Number one, you're adding on that weight, but I don't know, again, the weight's not an issue for me, but whenever you crank it up to high, when you really feel it on this mouse right here, it almost vibrates the entire mouse. So if I'm in a game and say Rainbow Six or something, right, you're just kind of focused on the game in that moment right there, you do feel it vibrating through the mouse. Now, of course, it's not shaking the house down or something like that, but again, you feel it throughout the entire deal and you also hear it. Now, if you put it on low, it's a little more manageable. You do feel it a little bit, not much at all. Again, especially if you're kind of in that claw or fingertip, you don't feel it. But when you start getting your palm on it, you clearly feel it. And again, you can hear it on any level right there. Now, I'm going to take that as, again, a review copy. And hopefully that's something that they can fix down the road right there. Because again, whenever you crank it up, it's almost like unusable on the high setting. And that's when you really notice it. That's when you really get to take the benefit of it and feel it. But again, when it's in your hand and that thing's going to town, ah, nah, nah, that's too annoying. That has to be something that has to be addressed ASAP. All right, so let's talk about our final thoughts on the Zephyr gaming mouse. I just want to call it the Zephyr fan mouse here, you know what I mean? Um, number one, it's going to be listed on Kickstarter July 22nd at 79 bucks right there. But regular MSRP is 158 No way ever would I recommend this at 158 bucks. No, no way. 80 bucks right now in current state is a little questionable, but again, I'm gonna go back to say, hey, this is a review unit. This is not what you're gonna get in your hands. There's minor things that, the biggest things I think need to be fixed on this mouse. Number one, that RGB, because again, it's annoying to me at least, right? You need different options and you need to be able to dim it. Number two, that 400 DPI has to be implemented into that. Now, if we're gonna dive deeper, I think the fan needs to be upgraded. I don't know what they need to do, lube it or get a better grade fan or something to stop it from vibrating the entire mouse. Maybe just lower the setting down a little bit. I'm not sure, but that has to be fixed as well because when you're on the highest setting, it is clearly annoying. Another easy fix is to correct the feet down here. I don't know, put one right here in the middle or you know, right in the middle there or up towards the front. I don't know, something just to balance it out and reduce some of that drag on the sides right there. So again, let's take this as a review copy. Those couple of things right there, easy fixes. The one thing, the fan might be the hardest, but everything else I think is a very easy fix. And then we sum it up. Is it worth that 79 bucks right there? I gotta say yes at 79 bucks. Regular MSRP at 158, no way. No, hands down, no, you know? But at 80 bucks, still a pricey. But what I class this as is again, like I stated earlier, innovation, right? And that's what's really fun about tech. I don't know about you guys, but me at least. Is this the best game and match you're ever gonna find? A new greatest thing? No, not at all. But it's awesome tech. And me personally, I mean, y'all know I drive a Tesla Model 3, right? I like getting my hands on that new hottest tech and trying it out. And maybe I'm the test dummy, you know what I mean? But that's exactly what this is right here. It's just something new innovative and just really cool to get in the hands. It's not a piece of junk by any means. The build is stinking solid. I mean, this thing is rock solid. Couple kinks to work out of it and we got a winner. Now, one thought on my side, Zephyr, if you're watching this, maybe you can take this into consideration. I don't know, just tiny little YouTuber here, right? One thing that would be really cool 
is maybe make an option without the fan. I know the fan is a selling point and that's what makes this original, but let me tell you what, your build, your buttons, and your style is also original, not just the fan. So yeah, have the fan option, but maybe we reduce the price a little bit and have an option without the fan. Cause let me tell you what, you have a fantastic build, fantastic style, and it just, it fits and feels fantastic. You know what I mean? I'm saying fantastic all the time here. Fantastic. But anyways, again, pop that fan out, reduce the price a little bit, and you still have a really solid mouse. So again, just give the customer some options. But hey, please do let me know what you think about this mouse down in the comments. I'm really curious. This is definitely a conversation piece right here. So please spark it up down here. I just wanna hear your thoughts about it. Again, kinda, kinda think about it for a second before you start commenting. Because the first thing, even with me, the first thing that came to my mind is like, what a goofy, stinking gimmick, you know what I mean? But again, kind of think about it like that, a fan. Think about RGB, it's, it's the same thing, you know what I mean? So seriously, think about it and let me know down in the comments what you think, will you be picking one up or something? It makes me laugh, it really does, but it is a cool mouse. But hey, thank you so much for stopping by and watching my review on the Zephyr Fan Mouse. I hope I answered some questions if you were looking into this mouse and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit that thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to some future tech videos. Hey, I hope to catch you in the next one. Bye now.